We are here at Tranquility Fine Arts Gallery. We have the privilege of talking with Stephen Lester today. He is one of our artists that we are very proud of here in the gallery. He's local to the Woodstock, Georgia area, but he's done a lot of work all over, not just around here. And uh, we wanted to take a moment to honor him and speak with him about his passion and his vision and his professional skill set. So welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I have an interesting background. Uh, you know, I had spent four decades working in the commercial sector as, as a art director and creative director in the advertising and corporate world. And uh, really, it wasn't until I retired from that that I got serious about being a fine artist. Uh, I have a degree in uh, illustration, commercial illustration. So I graduated in the 70s. I'm an old teaser. So when, uh, when I graduated, I started as an illustrator, commercial illustrator. And, and, but I eventually morphed within the first decade into uh, doing uh, art direction and creative direction. And I got away from doing painting. And I have a regret of that. I, I was very successful in what I did. And I enjoyed what I did. But I wish I had never put down my paintbrushes. Uh, because I really didn't pick them up again until I was, uh, well, five, six years ago and now and started doing it myself and really was doing it for myself. I uh, didn't know if anybody else would like or appreciate what I've done. Uh, that's why uh, many people know me as a sports artist because I was doing sports because I liked sports. <laughs> I was a Braves fan. I worked for it. And I grew up in Atlanta, I worked for Ted Turner back when he owned the Atlanta Braves. I knew a lot of those guys in the 80s and the 90s. And uh, so, you know, he owned the Hawks as well. So I kind of grew up on that. Sports was uh, a fan. I played ball in school. And, and uh, so I did it for myself. And uh, I guess because of uh, the emergence of social media, I could post things get instant feedback from people who liked my work and said they wanted it or wanted to print or something like that. And it was an encouragement to me. So I continued on in that way until I just uh, eventually um, found a niche and found some people that uh, really liked my work and it encouraged me to continue as a fine art painter. At that point, I still didn't know where I was going, but I was, you know, refreshing my uh, my skill set, bringing it back forward, you know, uh, studio skills as well as the painting and the hand skills, the ability to see, the ability to put it down uh, on canvas. And, uh, you know, if, if you look at my work from just a few years ago and, and right now, it's much more diverse and much more, um, I guess, uh, not diverse in terms of its subject matter, but in terms of its brushwork that kind of thing. As an illustrator, you're oftentimes a, a narrative artist trying to capture the event or a slice or a moment in time. And uh, by virtue of that, it's more often than not very realistic. So I'm constantly trying to work against that realism. People often say, well, it looks just like a photo. That's not a real compliment to me because I can capture that. But I really, uh, and I say that with tongue in cheek, but it, it really is uh, my desire to have more of my own personal passion about it, interpret that moment in such a way that it's not just like a photograph, that it is, it brings out some emotion. And uh, so that's why hence the sports have a lot of movement in there and they have a lot of action and a lot of excitement for me. But now I'm beginning to find that I can move that into other uh, subject areas and bring that same emotion into that as well. So it's been an interesting uh, journey because even though I've only started it, people say, well, how long did it take you to do that? And I'll say about 70 years you know, <laughs> but, uh, because I have now these decades of experience because you bring in not just the craft, you bring all of this creativity from decades of working in the creative field. And then you bring the craft and you also bring the wisdom of experience that comes along with that. And those three overlap. Yeah. And that brings uh, a whole uh, plethora of uh, components into what makes a painting. 
So does that answer your question? That absolutely <laughs> answers my question. And you mentioned the uh, invent of social media, and that's actually how we found you. Yeah. We saw you on social media. We had a lot of mutual friends. Yes. Um, and then Mike, my husband, reached out and said, hey, you know, we want to open me. a car gallery. Fortunate for me, Mike likes sports. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> that was huge too. And so. the funny thing was, if I remember, when you first came over and said, we we're, we're thinking about starting a gallery, and we'd like to ask you if you'd want to be part of that. I'm going, I don't know if my work's going to sell in the gallery. Remember that? <laughs> yes, and, yes. Uh, so it wasn't that I was so, uh, had such low sense of self value. It's just that, you know, I wasn't sure. I hadn't been in, a, in and around the gallery scene and just didn't know what would sell or what would go. And so I appreciate the opportunities you guys, you guys <laughs> believed in me early on and said, let's give it a shot. Well, I appreciate you trusting us to kind of take that opportunity and see what happens. And if I remember when we first met your wife, Rosemary, he was an absolutely beautiful person, spoke that encouragement into you. Yes, she, she spoke, she planted a lot of oh, seeds of encouragement. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Rose, Rosemary believed in me years ago. We, we've been married 43 years, but you know, she couldn't wait. She continued to, like for Christmas, she would buy me an old paint set and say, get to work. <laughs> you know, I'd do one or two and I'd give them away and, and I, through the years, but I never really got into it. And um, so finally, uh, about the same time that I was retiring uh, from my professional field, um, Rosemary said, uh, you know, we're going to get a house that has a studio, a dedicated studio. So, and she, really was the one that encouraged me. I want to see paint everywhere. She believed in me. You know, it's that old song that, you know, she believed in me. I'll never know what she sees in <laughs> me. But yeah, that's been a great encouragement mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And your studio is, I mean, it's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. Things happen for a reason. I truly believe that. Things will line up and happen for a reason. So, and we've learned a lot from you. I know you recently gave me a book and that just was very eye-opening to a lot of different concepts and it's very inspiring too. So Steven is actually one of our top artists. It's funny that he actually said to us, I don't know if my work would fit in a gallery. I don't know, I don't know. And we said, let's just do it and see what happens. And he is actually our top seller and has been now for a very long time. Um, this is one of his pieces here. This is actually my favorite piece. This, this piece here just it just brings so much peace and comfort to a person's soul and then behind this here is also one of his newer works um, so you can see that as he mentioned he does a lot of different work so kind of the landscape and seascape but also the sports art and you were also awarded the privilege you were supposed to go to Tokyo for the Olympics yeah yeah um, I had done a series of um, Olympians as I, I mentioned that I was a narrative artist. So I like the stories. And to me, these, these pieces tell stories. That's what evokes something out of you about that particular painting right there. But I like backstories of athletes. I'm not just interested in the uh, stardom of it. In fact, sometimes I actually resent the fact that they make so much money and they have, you know, there's all kinds of scandals that go on and that sort of thing. That's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is those people that overcame great odds to get to where they were. And so I had done a series of paintings for myself that were uh, untold stories of Olympians, whether it be uh, Jesse Owens or, you know, uh, someone uh, like that that had to overcome great odds to achieve great things. And I feel like those stories are undertold, particularly in the visual arts scene. So I did them and I wound up having a portfolio of, you know, 13 or 16 different paintings of, of uh, Olympians and Paralympians. And um, because in 2019, the United States Sports Academy awarded me the International Sports Artist of the Year, uh, I got made contact with the Olympic, uh, uh, Tokyo Olympics. And in 2020, uh, was invited to have a solo exhibition of my Olympic theme work there at the Olympics. Of course, we know what happened with the COVID in 2020, and that was canceled, put off until another year. 
And even then, I was supposed to uh, reschedule, but there was nobody there um, other than the athletes. Right. There were no spectators to see my work. So it didn't work out. But, you know, there's 2026 20, in Paris, and, and uh, 24, excuse me, and then in 28, there's uh, Los Angeles. So those come around every few years. So I'm still hopeful that, um, you know, those will see, be seen and appreciated. Um, even if it's not uh, something that I sell, I mean, I'd love to sell the work, but um, I'm more interested in people seeing it and hearing these stories and telling those back stories. You know, that's, uh, I think, really inherent in all of my work is a backstory. It may not be obvious, but something that it means to me uh, in, in this particular